Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're seeing F equals MA for the first time, so we can answer questions from exercise 10C. So, what is F equals MA? Well, it's a formula, a Newtonian formula, that links force, mass and acceleration in this really simple way. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. So, if we know a certain force that's being applied onto a particle, we know how much that particle weighs or its mass, then we can find out its acceleration. And if we know any of these two components, then we can work out the third one just by rearranging it a little bit. Now, when a particle is stationary or has no acceleration or it's chugging along the motorway at a constant velocity, then it means that there is no force being applied to that particle. Think about the forces you feel when you're inside a car. You only feel forces when you accelerate and you decelerate. When you're chugging along the motorway at your sensible 68 miles per hour, you don't feel any forces acting on you because you are, you are not accelerating. Your acceleration is zero, so hence the other side of the formula must equal zero as well. Another way of looking at this is W equals mg. Now, in this formula here, this is standing for weight, the force that you're feeling um, due to gravity is equal to mass times by acceleration caused by gravity, which we use as the letter G. So when you step on the scales and you see that your weight is uh, 10 and a half stone or however much you weigh, that's not actually your weight, that's your mass. Okay, your mass, your weight is calculated by then taking that 10 and a half stone and timesing it by G. So in actual fact, your weight is probably 100 stone your mass, which you're measuring when you step on the scales, is about 10 and a half stone. Okay, so difference between weight and mass is important. Weight is the force that you feel due to gravity acting downwards, um, and it's calculated by taking your mass, your, your how much you weigh in kilograms or stone, and then timesing it by g. Find uh, the weight in newtons of a particle that weighs that has a mass of 12 kilograms. Okay, so all we do here is plug in 12 in for the mass. G is 9.8, the acceleration due to gravity, and we get 117.6 newtons. So weight is not actually measured in kilograms or stone. It's measured in newtons because it's a force attracting downwards towards the centre of the Earth, um, and on Earth that force, that acceleration, is 9.8. And because we've measured uh, G to two significant figures, it's only fair that we put our final answer to two significant figures. OK, another small question here. Find the acceleration when a particle of mass 1.5 kilograms is acting on by a 6 newton force. Well, set up your F equals MA. Substitute in your numbers, you've got 6 newton force, 1.5 is your mass, so you get A as 4 metres per second squared. So remember your units here. Force is in, force is in newtons, mass is in kilograms, and if it's in grams you need to convert it into kilograms, and acceleration is in meters per second squared. So what you could say here is that one newton is equal to one kilogram meter per second squared. But you don't really need to know that. Okay, uh, a slightly more complex question here now. So we've got a particle of mass two kilograms with uh, four forces acting on it, and we know it's only accelerating to the right by two meters per second squared. So looking at the horizontal and vertical, and sorry, the horizontal motion, we're going to have two as our acceleration. But when we look at the vertical acceleration, we don't have any acceleration. So we're going to have to split this question up into two separate components, the horizontal component and the vertical component. This technique here is called resolving forces, splitting up the forces into horizontal and vertical directions. So looking at the horizontal forces first, and when you write down your answers, it's really good to start off by labelling the fact you're resolving in the horizontal direction. So taking F equals MA. Now what we're going to do 
is, for this question here, we're going to set the right-hand direction to be positive, and we're going to put both of these forces onto the left-hand side, because that's where the forces go. So substituting in the forces here, so we've got x that's acting in the positive direction, and we've got negative 4 that's acting uh, to the left. Okay, so all of your forces will go on the left-hand side of your f equals ma formula, and then you substitute in your m, which is 2, and your acceleration, which is 2. So simplifying this, we get x minus 4 equals 4, so therefore x must equal 8 newtons. So that's helped us work out x. How do we work out y now? Well, when we resolve vertically, and we've got no acceleration up and down, the upwards force must equal the downwards force. Another way you can put this is set up an f equals ma. Set y minus 2g. Now, think about why we need a 2g force here. It has to be 2g because we've got a... This is effectively the weight that's equal to the mass of the particle times by the acceleration caused by gravity, which is g. So this 2g force here is always going to be here in these types of questions because that's the weight of our particle. So here, y minus 2g is equal to 2, which is the mass, and 0 because there is no acceleration. So therefore, y is just equal to 2g, or 19.6 newtons. Okay, so fairly standard question there. Let's give it one more and add some more complexity into it. Uh, find the values of the missing values in this force diagram. So we've got a 4 kilogram force here, which means we need weight on this particle here of 4 times g. It's always times g. That's the acceleration caused by gravity. So therefore, it's mass times acceleration. Mass is 4. Acceleration is g because of gravity. So it's 4g. That's its weight. So we've got... A couple of uh, directions we need to resolve into here. We've got horizontal and vertical. So let's look horizontally first. So the first thing you'd write in your answers would be resolve horizontally. And um, we are not moving. Uh, we're not. Uh, we're sorry. We're going horizontally first. So we're going to treat left as the positive direction. Eighty is going to be positive. X is going to be negative here. So when we substitute in our forces, we're going to have a positive force of 80, a negative force of x, because that's in the wrong direction in respect of our uh, acceleration, and then that equals mass times acceleration, 4 times 2. And rearrange for x, and we get 72. The next thing we need to do here is now resolve vertically, so looking at these blue forces now, we have not got any acceleration in any direction, so therefore downwards forces must equal upwards forces. You can do it the long way and go through f equals ma if you want to, but really, if you understand the question, you should be able to just jump straight to this line here. If there's no acceleration in the vertical direction, then upwards forces must balance out with downwards forces. So y is equal to 20 plus 4g. Okay, one more here, and it's in a wordy context. So a particle of mass 5 kilograms is pulled along a rough, okay, so there must be some friction here, a rough horizontal table by a force of 20 newtons, frictional force of 4 newtons against it. Given that the particle is initially at rest, find the acceleration of the particle, distance travelled by the particle in the first four seconds, and the magnitude of the normal reaction between the particle and the plane. Start by drawing a diagram. Five kilogram uh, weight, sorry, five kilogram mass and five g weight. Make sure you get the distinction between those two. Upwards force will be r, so jumping straight to c here. I know that R is going to be 5G. And it's on a table, so I'd add that table in if it were me. And I've been told as well it's 20 newtons uh, pulling it along with a frictional force of 4 newtons. And acceleration is going to the right here. Why is it going to the right? Well, 
we can see here that the 20 newton force is bigger than the 4 newton force, so we know it's to the right. When we're looking for the acceleration, we're going to resolve horizontally. So the first thing I would write here is resolving horizontally. And then it's 20, because that's in the positive direction. Take away 4, because that's in the negative direction. E equals 5, which is the mass, times acceleration, which is A, that we don't know. So it's 16 e equals 5A, so divide by the 5, and we get 3.2 metres per second. So we know that A is 3.2. How can we find the distance it travels in 4 seconds? Well, given that the particle was initially at rest, we can link it back to our SUVAT formulas. And this is a classic way that we can bring in two topics in one go. We find acceleration using F equals MA, and we find some distance or final speed or something like that using SUVAT. So using S equals UT plus half AT squared, we find the distance, which is 25.6. Find the magnitude of the normal reaction on the particle on the table. Now, R here is the normal reaction. That's the force that we want to find for part C. And in this case here, it's just going to balance out with the 5g force down the bottom because there's no vertical acceleration so r equals 5g all right then so that's all uh, all the examples we're going to go through here pause the video and have a go at these two and we'll go through it afterwards Right, okay then, well done for having to get these two questions here then. So an object uh, is moving on a rough horizontal surface, experiences constant frictional force of 30 newtons. So let's say it's moving to the left, moving to the right, and it has its friction that's acting to the left. Decelerates at a rate of 1.2 meters per second. So generally with these sorts of diagrams, I'll put a double arrow if it's acceleration. Um, so find the mass of the object. So yeah, that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? We've got an F equals MA formula. We'll set left as positive. So it's 30 equals a mass that we don't know uh, times 1.2. And dividing 30 by 1.2 and we get 25 kilograms. Okay. Question 9 here, a bit more tricky. A lift has a mass of 500 kilograms. It is lowered or raised by means of a metal cable that's above the top of the lift. Uh, the lift contains passengers whose mass are 300 kilograms. Okay, so 300. So the weight of these passengers is 300 G and the weight of the lift is 500 G. The lift starts from rest and accelerates at a constant rate, reaching 3 metres per second after moving 5 metres. Find the acceleration of the lift. Well, I don't think here we can use it, we can find the acceleration using F equals MA. I think in this question here, it's a sneaky way of asking us to use SUVAT. Initially from rest, reaches a speed of 3, and we need to find what A is. So in this formula here, we're going to use v squared equals u squared plus 2as. And uh, it's going to be 9 equals 0 plus 10s. No, 10a, sorry. So a is therefore going to equal 0 0.9 meters per second squared. Part B here is find the tension in the cable if the lift is moving vertically downwards. So that means we're going to be accelerating downwards by 0 0.9 meters per second squared. We're going to have 800 Newton force acting down, and we're going to have a T force in the tension on the cable. So in this case here, when we resolve our forces vertically, we're going to have 800 Newtons going downwards in the positive direction. The reason we're setting downwards as positive here is because the K, the lift is being lowered downwards, so acceleration is downwards. And they're going to take away T, 
this is going to equal 800 times 0 0.9 and doing it all in one go rearranging for t we get 800 times 9.8 and then we're going to subtract 800 times 0 0.9 and we're going to get 7,120 newtons. Part C here is find the tension in the cable when the lift is moving vertically upwards. Well, I'd expect the tension to be more than 7,120 because it's having to pull it up as well as accelerate upwards as well. So let's just work down in this corner here. So for part C here, if we swap around this acceleration it's now going upwards when we use our f equals ma formula our forces t is now going to be in the positive direction acting upwards 800 g is now going to be a negative because upwards is positive and this is going to equal 800 times 0.9 in the acceleration so notice here how the forces all go on the left hand side they'll either be positive or negative, and they're added together. So in this case here, T, uh, we have to add the 800 G onto the other side here, so it's going to be an add instead of a subtract now, and that gives us 8,560 Newtons. Okay, so there we are then, that's a pretty challenging question. Have a go at plenty more of the questions from exercise 10C. Do have a go at the harder ones towards the end, those are the ones that will challenge you and more likely come up in your A-level exams. Thanks very much for watching this video.